So far, we have looked at the representation of impedances and admittances on a Smith chart from a uh, qualitative point of view. However, uh, now we'll be looking at uh, uh, how to uh, do some impedance matching on the chart, and hence we will have a more quantitative approach to uh, the representation of impedances and impedance matching. Let's start, as usual, uh, by going to Project Options and selecting uh, our frequency. In this case, we'll select 1 GHz, uh, select Single Point, and then Apply. We then select the units that are suited to the frequency that we've chosen. In this case, nanoharads and picofarads will do for inductance and capacitance, respectively. And then we'll open a new schematic. We'll call it Series Matching. Now, the first element that we require, as usual, is a measurement port. We can get a port in two ways. We can either click on port up here and then uh, place the port on the schematic, or we can simply press Ctrl P and place the port where we want it. We'll start with a series RL combination. So we'll just put a resistor in series with an inductor. And then we need to put a ground reference at the end of this connection. We can do this in one or two ways. We can either go to the ground icon up here, click and then place on the schematic, or we can simply press Ctrl G and place the ground where we need it. We'll also set initial values for the resistor and inductor of 20 ohms for the resistor and 6.4 nanoharis for the inductor. Now we need to set up a graph, a Smith chart, which allows us to see what impedance is observed at port 1. Now we need to add a measurement to our chart and as usual we can go to add measurement, choose the uh, S parameter S11 which is our reflection coefficient and then select the data source name as series match. Click on apply and then OK. Then click on simulate. As usual, our chart looks a bit busy, so what we can do is right-click on the chart, go on to Properties, and then change the uh, grid density to coarse. And this allows us to see things a bit more clearly. The other thing that we can do is also uh, change the font size and color for the uh, numbers that are displayed on the chart to make it more legible. To do this, we just right-click on the chart, select Properties, then the Fonts tab, Axis numbers and then select a size of uh, 12 and black for color. Click on OK, apply, and then OK again. And you can see that now the numbers are quite a bit bigger and a lot more legible. We can also insert a marker to have a precise readout of what's going on. Press Ctrl M and then click on the point of interest. Remember that while the real part of this impedance is not frequency dependent, so the normalized resistance, which is 0.4, will stay the same no matter what frequency we choose. The reactance will change across frequency. And we can remind ourselves of this by going to Project Options, selecting Frequencies, and then setting up a frequency sweep between 0.5 GHz and 1.5 GHz with a step of 0.1. Click on Apply and OK, and then Simulate and you can see that uh, our impedance is changing across frequency by staying on a constant resistance circle. You can clearly see that as you increase the frequency, the uh, reactance increases, and as you decrease, you get the exact opposite. And that's what we would expect for an inductor. Now, let's uh, come back to uh, having just one frequency at 1 gigahertz. And remember that we can denormalize this impedance quite easily just by right-clicking on the graph again, going on to Properties, and then on the Markers tab, we can select Denormalize to 50 ohms. Click on Apply, and then OK. And now you can see the actual values of impedance that are seen by port 1. Suppose that we want to change this impedance into something else. Suppose that we want port 1 to see an impedance which is different from the one that's displayed here. We can do this by carrying out some impedance matching, i.e. by inserting components that will take us to the right point in the, on the Smith chart, which represents the impedance which we desire. The impedance that we want to get to, which is 20 minus 10J, needs to be normalized first, 
hence uh, its real and imaginary part, must be both be divided by the normalizing impedance, in our case 50 ohms, uh, so that we can represent them on the chart. So uh, if we do this, we end up with an impedance, a uh, normalized impedance, which is 0.4 minus 0.2 J. And this point can be easily found on the Smith chart, and it's this point here. So how can we get to this point? Well, we must look at the difference in reactance between the point that we are at now and the point that we want to get to. So at the moment, our reactance is 0.8, and we want to get to minus 0.2. In order to do this, we have to add a uh, normalized reactance of minus 1. So as to transform a, a normalized reactance on 0.8 into a normalized reactance on minus 0.2. Because we need to add an, a reactance which is a negative, this means that we need to add some capacitance, whose normalized reactance is equal to minus 1. So this means that its denormalized reactance will be equal to minus 50. So it is important to first denormalize this value. So we can calculate the uh, value of the capacitance that corresponds to uh, the uh, reactance which we desire at the uh, frequency of interest. And this turns out to be uh, 3.2 picofarads. So what we must do then is go back to our schematic and then we can make a little bit of space here and insert a capacitor in series with the resistor and the inductor. We said the value of the capacitor should be 3.2 picofarads. Now let's go back to our graph and click on simulate. We can see that now we are at the point that we desired, which has a normalized resistance of 0.4 and a normalized reactance of minus 0.2. So we transformed a complex impedance with an inductive part into a complex impedance with a, with a capacitive part. Now let's go back to our schematic and let's assume that we started with the opposite case. So we just have a, a resistor in series with a capacitor and uh, let's change the values now um, to uh, 30 ohms for the resistor and 5.3 picofarads for the capacitor and then click on simulate we can see in our graph now that of course we are uh, at a point uh, on the chart which is capacitive and we can easily read the values for the normalized resistance and reactance which are 0.6 and minus 0.6j respectively Suppose that you don't want a, your generator to see a capacitive impedance, but you want to uh, transform this into an inductive impedance instead. And uh, also assume that your target uh, impedance is 30 plus J50 ohms. So the first step, as we did before, is to plot our target impedance on the chart. In order to do this, we first have to normalize its value. So we have to divide both its real and imaginary parts by the normalizing impedance, which is 50 ohms. If we do this, we end up with the normalized impedance, that which is shown here, with a uh, resistive part of 0.6 and a uh, reactive part of 1. The next thing that we need to do is see how much reactance we are going to need to add to be able to move up the constant resistance circle to the point that we want to get to. Of course, the uh, resistive part is the same, so we don't need to do anything to the resistance in this case, as in the previous case. All we need to do is add some reactants to be able to get to the target point along the constant resistance circle. Because we want to get from a normalized reactance of minus 0.6, to a normalized reactance of 1. We need to add 1.6. Of course this reactance is positive, so what we need is to add an inductor in series with the resistor and the capacitor. How do we calculate the value of this inductor? Well, first of all, we have to denormalize the uh, reactance that we need this inductor to have. So we need to multiply 1.6 by 50. And then uh, we can use uh, the formula for the impedance of an inductor uh, at the frequency of interest 
to work out the value of the inductor which we need. This works out to be 12.8 nanoharries. So all we need to do now is go back to our schematic and then we need to add an inductor here of the value that we've calculated, which is 12.8 nanoharries. So if we now go back to our graph and then simulate, you can see that we've moved up to the uh, correct point uh, which we desired uh, just by adding a, uh, an inductor in series. 